Hello and welcome back to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. My name is Dr. Brent Janogan. I'm your host tonight. We have Dr. Mike Giese, Season 16, Episode 9. He is a Life University graduate. He's the owner and operator of Lakeview Family Chiropractic in Muskego, Wisconsin. He is a man of faith. He is hardworking and integrous. He is also a recent graduate of the Max Living Health Center program. We're going to dive into all that tonight. Dr. Mike, thanks for being here. Dr. Brent, I am so honored to be here. I am so excited. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely, absolutely. It's such an honor to have you as well. Before we jump in that conversation, we are going to hear from our amazing guest, our amazing sponsors that allow this podcast to happen. Total Clinic Solutions is your go-to source for purchasing both brand new and refurbished chiropractic equipment, as well as phone support for repairs and maintenance. Call Derek and allow him to combine your wishes and his 23 years of chiropractic equipment expertise to find what's best for you and your patients at 704-622-4089 or head to TotalClinicSolutions.com now. True Cairo, helping chiropractors explode their practices and save more lives by shifting the perception of what they do from neck and low back pain to being about the brain and nervous system, leading to increased retention, more referrals, higher case averages, but most importantly, better patient outcomes for more than just neck and back pain. For more information, Check out the link below, truechiro.org. Again, that's truechiro.org. And welcome back. This is season 16, episode episode 9. We have Dr. Mike Kesey tonight. Mike, it is so, so awesome to have you. We started chiropractic school together. Um, it's been a real, it's been a real fun ride. So it really has. I mean, we just caught up before this. Like, dude, I miss you. Like, we we've known each other for a while, and going through chiropractic school, like, we know we go we went through a lot, and like, uh, it's so good to see you again. Uh, missed you for sure. Absolutely, I missed you too. It's it's been real. You know, you're a real one. Uh, school is school puts you through it, and you definitely evolve. You become you know a better version of yourself. Um, ultimately coming out a better person and you know I get to watch that in you and it was a beautiful beautiful transformation and now you're a doctor you just opened Lakeview Family Chiropractic up in Muskego Wisconsin uh yeah you know tell me a little bit about that real quick yeah so three weeks ago um actually tomorrow is going to be uh week number four so almost a month in and uh it's been it's been awesome uh I, I'm so blessed to be here. Number one, it's a lot of people that got me here, but, um, to, you know, it, it's been a dream of mine for a really long time since we all started chiropractic school and, uh, for all chiropractors out there, like it is, it's so cool to start doing it and being, being the head honcho and saying like, all right, all these people are counting on you, man. Like, um, puts a lot of weight on your shoulders, but like, if you're, you're willing to lift it up, like it, it's a blast. I love that. And it's just been watching you develop, you know, you were in the health center, the max living health center program. Um, mm -hmm. that was what, six months, right? Yeah. So it's anywhere between six and nine months. And I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. So there's phases of it. Like you gotta get approved, right? They're not going to pass everybody. And, um, uh, the people down there that uh, they, they push you. I mean, we, we went through a lot of script training. We go through, how to get patients in the door, just going out and marketing for hours on end. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it, it, it does transform you. And, but it, it builds this threshold that makes you ready to own up to your own office. And so that's why I'm saying like, we brought up Max Living Health Center. I owe a lot to them. So why I'm here, obviously. And I own a Max Living Health Center. So yeah. it's awesome. But say, just say that again for a second. Just say a little slower. What, like, what's you, that? You own a Max Living Health Center. I own a Max Living Health Center, man. It's it's cool. I still don't believe it sometimes. I mean, it's like it's been three weeks, and it's uh, <laughs> it still blows my mind every day. I think about it, but I'm grateful. I'm super mm -hmm. grateful. That's so amazing. So, I, you're such a you're such a a generous person. You're such a kind person. You're you're you've always been that way. Um, what made you want to be a chiropractor? 
So, I mean, this story goes back a, a ways away. I was 10 years old. Um, and a traumatic event happened in my life. I was wrestling my uncle and I got, I was on his shoulders. I was wrapped around his head. He's trying to flip me over and catch me. And I just landed on my head like a dart right on the ground. And I blacked out. Like I didn't know where I was. Uh, I woke up with my chest hurting cause I wasn't breathing. I was white in the face and my mom was freaking out. Obviously I'm here. Right. Mm -hmm. So I popped back up and, uh, ever since then I had awful low back pain like literally hammer with a nail right in my back, right? That SI joint right there. And like, if I bent the wrong way or tweaked the wrong way, it felt as if like someone was stabbing me with a knife. Mm -hmm. Um, and so my mom, like the good mom, she was like, did what she need, wanted to do. Like, she's like, oh, we got to take the hospital. Like, let's check this out. She was scared. Mm -hmm. Um, they do x-rays, they run some tests, said, everything's fine. Might be muscular. Go, uh, go to PT, go to physical therapy mm -hmm. to do physical therapy for a while. Um, you know, do the exercises, do some stretches did all the heat did all the ice. Long story short, Brent, like I was doing this for eight years and it got me to a point where I was just managing this pain and it became my new normal, oh. right? Which is what I think we see a lot of people deal with. Like they have this pain and they think it's their new normal. And when patients walk in my office, I tell them like, Hey, I, I know what you're going through. I, I was a patient like you, right? I, like I, I understand your pain and you know, eight years goes by, I'm 18 years old. I'm in college and I'm actually working out with the basketball team. And, uh, it was way before the season even started. Like I was just like trying to get on the team and I was just like, Hey, let's, let's see what I can do. I was working out with them. We were in the weight room and a chiropractor walks into my life. He sets up a table in our weight room and I was like, I got to try that. I, I heard, I heard it helps. Like, <laughs> let me jump on. I was oh, like, yeah. let's do this thing. Got jump on the table and just my back. And I'm like, okay, cool. Lit up like crazy. Then he adjusts my neck and like, boom, like talk about connection. Like every time I adjust one of my patients, I tell them their power's on. It's because when I got adjusted the first time, like it literally felt like my power got turned on. Like you flip a switch started sweating like crazy, got right in the face, um, had that sympathetic reaction that a lot of people get sometimes, and it was, which is awesome. And I felt what? great. And I was like, what the heck just happened? And chiropractor looks at me and goes like, son, we, we gotta get some x-rays, get some x-rays tells me your back's fine. The reason you've been having this issue is because it's in your neck. Interesting. I had a reverse curve. I had a five degree reverse curve mm -hmm. in my neck. So I've lost over hundred percent of the curve of my neck. It's cutting off life supply to my entire body. And you know what my body did to tell me that it was low back pain, low back pain. And so he actually addressed the cause of my problem. And once he started addressing the cause, lo and behold, it started going away. But <laughs> he told me the importance of this and getting adjusted. And then I learned about this lifestyle because it was a max living chiropractor. It was a max living chiropractor that mentored me into this and taught me about chiropractic. And I was, my mind was blown. I was supposed to take over my dad's, dad's business as a glass company. Like that's what I, I went to school for. Like I didn't know what I was going to do. Chiropractor comes to my life and here I am. All right. So that's how I became a chiropractor. That's absolutely amazing. And such a beautiful, yeah. thing, it's everyone deals with that. You know, everyone has something going on. Everyone has some type of, uh, you called it a new norm. Everyone acquires yeah. a new norm and they're in, they're in these pain patterns. And they just accept the fact that, like, well, that's it. I guess I just live with back pain now, or I live with this, yeah, you know, migraine where I can't see and I have to lock myself inside my dark room, mm -hmm. with blinds on with sunglasses. Right. And that's not that's not living. That's surviving. Exactly. And the problem is, people think they're dealing with it alone, and that no one else is going through it. They think it's just a them problem. That's why I tell them, like, hey, I know what you're going through. I was a patient. I was a patient. I sat here. I didn't even believe in chiropractic until someone came into my life. And I'm hoping that I can be that for them. That I'm this person that can come into their life and just show them a new hope. That's, yeah. that's why I do what I do. Well, it's, you know, I, I really am a firm believer. You can only take someone as far as you've gone on your own journey. Like, yeah. how do, how do I know how to walk the footprints if I've never walked them myself? Mm -hmm. And like, right. 
it's just, you know, with patients, you trying to explain them. It's like, I've, I've gone through this journey. It's like, you know, weight loss. I talk about weight loss for myself because, you know, my journey is uh, learning how to use my body, learning how to provide movement, as well as going through understanding rations, understanding food, understanding nutrition, understanding that, not, you know, eating processed foods is not going to give me the best performance versus eating organic grass fed beef or cold water fish, you know, or like eating organic veggies mm -hmm. versus consuming all these, you know, Foods that ultimately become sugars. Like at the end of the day, we run off of fat. Yeah, that's what happens. It's like we just consume a bunch of carbs, and then that just becomes fat and just blocks us up, and then we don't process, and we just yep. don't perform, and then we get lazy because we have no energy because our body is trying to consume all mm -hmm. these carbs to break it down. But I digress. Right. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's like it's so easy to get in a rabbit hole because there's serious. Oh my gosh! When it, I talk with patients, I'm just like, oh, okay, hold on. Let's get back to where we're supposed to go. Like, I can Same. talk about this for hours, hours. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's passion. And that's something that uh, you've always had was just, you've been very passionate. You've always had the passion to help people. Um, and you know, I consider you a, a bit of a seeker because even in, as a student, you, you were always seeking information. You're always seeking guidance. You're always mm -hmm. seeking more wisdom and understanding. Um, and also you were going through your own journey. You know, you were, you had life going on while you were in school, while you were looking and advancing yourself to be able to help other people. And the beautiful part of the conversation is now that you're a doctor, you're on the other end of the spectrum from student to doctor, and you get to take the knowledge that you've acquired over the past four years, ultimately, you know, however long last yeah. years and bring that to people and say, Hey, I can help you because now I have a solution. And, mm -hmm. um, being a seeker, you know, finding, and like you would talked about it, and I'd rather, I'd rather it come from you, but being a seeker, what, like your, your client base, you're up there in Muskego, Wisconsin, looking for people. Who are you looking for? Like what, what's that, what's that client base? That you're just, you're reaching out and trying <laughs> to draw them in and attract them. Oh, well, first off, man, it's anyone with a spine. Yeah. That's who I'm trying to get. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. We're trying to get every single person that's walking these streets, but I'm trying to get the people that are lost. And, you know, I've, you know, with, we brought up max living, we, we are big on external marketing. We go out and get people because people are not exposed to this. They're not just going to go online and just click that ad. They'll scroll through it. So we have to make it our duty to go find those people. And one thing that really motivated me before I opened my office, I had to get a, a certain number of clientele. Like I, I can't just wait for people to come to me. I had to get them to come into the office. And, you know, something hit me. I was actually in church and the pastor, you know, said that like, you know, Jesus found the lost. And it just like hit me. I was like, I'm not saying I'm Jesus, right? But I'm just like thinking, I was like, that's what I need. I need to go find the lost. Like people that are lost in their health, people that are like believing that this medical model is there for their health. And it's not, it, it, we need to be their health advocate. We need to be their health leaders. Go find them. Go find them because I live in a town that health is not of most importance here whatsoever. I was telling you, when you will drive down my street, there's not one healthy restaurant. There is not, uh, there's, there's some pretty low quality gyms. Um, but there's people out there that want this. We just got to go find them. And we have a problem in this country of waiting, you know, waiting for these problems to come to us, right? So if you're going to wait for your problem to get that bad, I'd rather you wait for me to come to you. Well, I have something good to tell you. That's the beautiful part of the conversation. It's like, I would rather you be proactive. It's like, like me, myself, like I have two spondylosis thesis in my, in my lumbar. I'm walking mm -hmm. around with, I'm, I'm a ticking time bomb, especially being an all season athlete that does all the extreme sports I do. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I have to take account for myself and be accountable for my own health and well being. And being able to express that to people, it's like, I would rather be proactive in my health so that I have a healthy life in the future than be reactive once I'm diagnosed with something or have something that's debilitating. Right. Exactly. And that's the problem in our society is that we, we just react to things. We, we feel a symptom and we do something about it. We, f we feel a symptom, we get a medication, feel a symptom and go right to your doctor. Great. That's when you do it. Well, it's convenience. What if... It's yeah, exactly. We become spoiled really. And what if we just change the mindset to being proactive? Like you said, what if you didn't have the problem in the first place? Right. That's it's, 
you know, it really is getting to the root cause, being changing your thought process, changing the paradigm in which you think. Uh, I really like how Stevenson talks about it in the Green Books, uh, the difference between mm -hmm. inductive versus deductive thinking. Deductively, we're going to get to the root cause of this. I don't want to just band aid it. I want to get to the root cause of why this is occurring in your life and why it is affecting you the way it is. So that way we can find an active solution to pursue. That way we can fix this. It may take time. Mm -hmm. I cannot guarantee you it will be an immediate fix, but it is a journey that we will go on together and I will help coach you along this process and move you forward. It's, it's, it is a, um, it's, it's a, a walking together this more than it is, uh, unilateral conversation it's it's we're doing this together we're moving together as a community not just me telling you what to do which i find a lot of the inductive medical model is very much so take this it doesn't work come back in three weeks we'll change the prescription yeah is that effective is that getting to the root cause or or is that just you know masking the true causation of the reason that um you're sick and you have xyz you know like like when are we going to quit lying to ourselves? When are we going to quit running away from the actual problem and, and get to the root cause and say, right. I want to fix this. I don't want it to ever come back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a big problem. You, you said it's like people don't want to face reality. Like they know they're sick. They know that the cheeseburger they're eating is bad for them. They know that the cigarette they're going to smoke is bad for them. They're not dumb. People aren't dumb. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I appreciate that. They, they know what they're doing. We just got to be those people that actually kind of make that obvious. And say, you know where you're going to go. I'm going to show you the light to that. Mm -hmm. And if you keep following this path, well, you know where you're going to end up. But you can always change. You can always make a change. Yep. And provide that hope. There's so much negativity in the world. I want to be a place where you walk in and you just see the positivity. You feel the healing. You feel the health. You feel the frequency that you're like, this place is just a little bit different. Mm -hmm because we actually help people it's yeah it's such a beautiful conversation of chiropractic because it truly is for everybody right no matter who it is you said it earlier right whoever spine chiropractic is for you it it is that simple um i love i love the thought that this is this occurred to me i grew up remember the old chairs that had the backs it was like the the school chairs that had the little table on the side like a little l desk <sighs> You yeah push your back into it and you would pop your back yeah you, you oh, remember yeah. that like you would like pop and crack yourself i thought about this mm -hmm. today where did that come from subconsciously i had never been to a chiropractor i was from a, a country redneck town that didn't have chiropractors didn't have medical we were so far out in the country it was a 45 minute drive to the yeah. this local clinic where did i ever perceive the idea to pop my back to relieve the tension on my spinal cord and on my nervous system so that i could function better and have more vitality and have more range of motion available to me where did that come from mm -hmm. that's called an eight my friend <laughs> <laughs> it's called an eight. your body wanted that it it knew what it needed it needed to be adjusted yes. it needed it needed subluxation removed so it could be free and be able to do what it wanted to and knew it what it knew how to and mm -hmm. we, we move away from that because in in nature when you watch people's patterning um you know the elderly they they move away from their pain which ultimately re mm -hmm. results in this hyperkyphotic position well yep if you move into it you open an expression and allow yourself to be in a state of expression versus a state of survival and mm -hmm. i find that when you move into the pain though it is discomfort and it is uncomfortable you grow from it and i think right. our practice really is a part of that conversation you have to go through the pain to find the glory um yeah. it's one of my favorite little thought thought exercises yeah well i always tell my patients like hey pain's actually a good thing and we got to change our mindset on, on this pain dynamic. Like the pain's not the problem. Mm -hmm. The pain's telling you that you have a problem in the first place. Yes. So the, the problem's not the pain. Let's flip our mindset. The problem is that you're in pain for too long. We just got to figure out what's causing it. That's, that's the biggest dynamic change. So when people, the whole point, like if you, you, what we do here is we do orientations for our patients so that they get this stuff. They have to sit in this for a moment and kind of soak in the fact that oh, they're looking at a little different here. Like we're not just here to chase your pain. We're not here to put a bandaid over your pain. We're actually here to figure out where it's coming from in the first place. Cause 
you know, what I always believe in, like, what still holds true is like where you feel the pain usually isn't where it's coming from. Just like my story. That's how it developed for me. I had low back pain, but it came from my neck. Right? So we just got to find the cause of it. That's, that's what we got to tell our patients. And it's, it really is just that simple. At the end of the day, the conversation is, is that simple. We, we are looking to find the cause of the problem. We are not looking to, stop halfway. We're not looking to band-aid it. We don't want to um, avoid any part of the conversation because some of the harder conversations in life tend to be the ones that we grow the most from. Just like with our health, some of the harder conversations of like the foods we put in our body, how much exercise we're giving ourselves, mm-hmm. how much vitamin e we're getting from the sun, you know, um, the routines, the habits, the behaviors that we incorporate every day, how those affect us, those are the conversations that truly impact your life and how they change your life indefinitely forever for the better or for your own detriment if they are not good for you. Right. And right. It, it's just awareness, you know, getting people to become aware of that and yeah. teaching health. Yeah. And like I, I, I tell people this, I heard this, so it's not like I made it, made it up myself, but like, you know, you've heard the logo, like you, you only learn from your failures. Like you learn from your failures, mm-hmm. but it's like, you, you, you fail to learn, you, you fail to learn if you don't learn anything from the failure. Right. So like you could be in this pain and if you don't learn anything, why you're having the pain in the first place, you're just going to suffer from it the whole time and just keep falling down this path. You gotta learn from it. I like that. I like that. You gotta learn, you gotta learn from your, your pain. Yeah. So, Mike, we're going to hear from our sponsors, allow this podcast to happen real quick. And then after that, I want us to jump into a conversation because we were talking about it earlier. Um, Two things that your patients don't do enough of. Let's Mm. hear from the sponsors. All right. Imaging Services' primary business is chiropractic solutions. With over 45 years in the industry of helping chiropractors, Michael Tokash offers free consultations on building your business. In the past year, Imaging Services has installed over 100 x-ray machines and digital x-ray systems in over 42 states across the United States. For more, head to theimagingservices.com. And we're back with Season 16, Episode 9, Dr. Mike here. We've been diving into a lot of conversation around what is chiropractic, how does it help us, how does it impact us, and Mike, since you're just opening your own practice up there in Wisconsin, um, you're experiencing firsthand, you know, new patients, a new volume, a new demographic of people and wanting to impact that community. And you said something whenever we were talking before we jumped on the podcast, you were like, you know, there's two things that my patients don't do enough of. And I really Mm -hmm. want people to hear that because I really, I really think it's, it's a potent message that people need to hear. It's uh, a lot of truth. And so just drop yeah. it, draw some nuggets on us. Yeah. So yeah, like really why this came up is we were talking and we're trying to like say, say things to our patients without saying it. Right. That's, that's how this conversation came up. And I'm trying to tell my patients these things, but I've noticed like two major things. There's so many factors, but there's two major things that really stuck out to me that why these people are lost and why we need to find them, why they're in your office in the first place. Okay. So there's two things um, that they don't do enough of that got them in your office in the first place. The first thing is that people aren't like, it's gratitude. They're not gra- grateful enough of a certain thing. We all know the importance of gratitude, right? Mm-hmm. But they're not grateful when they're not in pain. Mm-hmm. They're great. They're never grateful when they're not in pain, right? They just, go throughout their life. But as soon as they get in pain, what do they wish? They wish they weren't in the pain, right? So they're not grateful about what needs to be done to get there in the first place. And so how I explain this to my patients is like, your body's amazing. Your body is so amazing. It always adapts. It always knows what to do. And it always adapts to make sure that you're not in pain and that you're comfortable. It always does that. It all, it's always trying to do that. So, if you're in pain, like how do you think you even got to that point? Your body has had to go through a lot for you to even be in this pain right now. Mm-hmm. Right? So we got to tell our patients like, Hey, 
whatever got you here in the first place, we got to figure out where that came from. Because if I get you out of this pain, you're just going to do whatever you did before yep. that got you here in the first place. Yep. Right. So if you could take the time to be grateful that whenever we get you out of this problem, you don't do what you did before to get there. We need to change that lifestyle. And if you're grateful for it, you're, you're thinking about that. Now we can, and you keep getting adjusted getting your nervous system checked. Like those are the things you're going to have to do to be grateful for so that you don't get in this pain again. And so that's how I bring that up. They're not grateful that they're not in pain. That's one thing. The second thing that most people do is they don't imagine, mm. right? Their imagination isn't being active, right? Why do we love kids so much? Because their imagination is going all the time. Like they're going to be astronauts. They're going to be professional athletes. They're going to be a neurosurgeon, right? Like, and nothing's stopping them. They'll just say it, right? What's holding adults back? We're not imagining enough. Mm. We're basing our, our futures and our life on our histories and our memories. We don't think about the future enough, right? So this whole concept came to me. I was listening to a podcast. His name is Erwin McManus. He's a pastor. And what the podcast was about is what, what is our purpose as humans? Like we all know we're on this earth for a reason mm -hmm. as humans, as people, right? Absolutely. But, but why? Right. There has to be something that you're here for. Well, what separates us from every other creature? Like we're creating God's image. Why are we so different? Right. Everything's supposed to create something like a silkworm creates silk. Mm -hmm. uh, a cow creates milk. List goes on and on. Right. What, are, what, are, what do humans create? And you always know said, hmm. he said, humans create futures. Ooh. Yeah. Humans create futures. And the, the reason why we can create futures is because we're the only species and we're the only living things on this planet that have an imagination. Wow. Right? All the things that we use are like the TV that we watch TV on, the phones that we're using this to even talk to each other was someone's imagination to create. <laughs> and they did the things to create this thing. And here we are. Like that's how our futures are created. So how do we bring that into our patients? Right. How do we relate this to patients? How do we relate this to people is that you, people need to start imagining a future where they're not in this pain anymore. Mm. Start imagining a life. Like, what is it going to look like if you don't have this? And every time I talk to my patients, I say, I've added this. And I was like, would your life be better if you didn't have this problem? I would say 99.99 .99 times out of a hundred, they say yes. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They say, yes. It's like, how would it be better? How would your life be better if you weren't struggling with this right now? I want them to think deeper, right? Brent, you, you see so many patients. I'm starting to see patients. Mm -hmm. They don't come in here because of low back pain. They don't come in here because they just have a headache. They come in here because their low back pain is preventing them from running a 5k with their yep. grandkids. They're coming in here because their headaches are preventing them from studying for their test. Right? There's a deeper reason. We have to find that hot button so that they can see how this is actually impacting their life because they don't imagine what the toll this is costing them on their life. Mm. And they don't imagine what their, what their life is going to look like without this and how that gratitude then comes in. Wow. Right? So imagination is so powerful because when I tell them then, I take that imagination, I say, you know what I do when I look at your x-rays? I imagine what your life is going to look like in 20 years when we fix this correction. Mm. I can see what your life's going to look like, right? I know I, I can tell you're going to live a better life because when you're doing that, you're going to be a better mother. You're going to be a better father. You're going to be better at your job. You're going to be able to provide for your family. You're going to be in a better mood, make more friends, right? All of these is for you to live a better life. This pain's holding you back from something. We got just got to find it. So if you can start imagining, what that's actually doing to yourself, you actually see your patients transform a little better. Mm. Mm. That's straight gold right there. <laughs> yeah, man, it's good. I love it. Like it's the I, the imagination, man. When he, this Erwin McManus guy was talking about it, I always try and like take things and like how can I apply this to chiropractic? It's like your patients aren't imagining enough what their what their life could look like. It you know thoughts traumas toxins. 
you know, we preach it. It's chiropractic, yeah. how we think, what we think, um, who we think about, what we think about, when we think about it, like all, all of the context, you know, the thing that makes us human or makes us so special is our prefrontal cortex. Um, that's mm-hmm. our individuality. It's, it's how we tell our stories, how we narrate our world, how we mm-hmm. build the context of what we're viewing, hearing, seeing, feeling, and tasting, and smelling. All of that information comes in and goes into ours and it gives us a visual image and that's that's what we're living you know it's where we tell ourselves Mm -hmm. um and it's so true you know matthew mcconaughey uh green lights one of the most profound parts of the book that i took away from is um you know you're not born with a roof over your head so don't build a roof over your head because you're not meant to be limited you're not humans aren't meant to have roofs so um he was just like, don't build a roof. There's no such thing as a mm. limit unless you put yourself in a box. Right. And it, that's good. I, I always go back to it and I'm like, R- a roof is a man-made thing. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's something that we make or someone makes for us and we get comfortable. We get complacent and you don't get uncomfortable. You don't imagine. You don't find gratitude in what you do. I wake up every day and thank the Lord that I have breath. I have life. Right. I wake. I have a roof over my head. I have hot water. The, the the conveniencies that we're provided here as Americans, you know, other people don't have that. Other people don't know what it's like. What like you run no, a newest iPhone in your in your pocket, and people are still using dial up Nokia's in other countries because. That's all they can have because they found it or saved enough of something to get something. Right. And, and you know, right. It's perspective. And it is, it is. And so to kind of build off that brand, it's like depression, suicide, anxiety, these numbers are on the rise, not just a little bit, they're going up exponentially, especially since was like this past two years. Right. Hmm. I, I really do think like, that depression and all these things are coming because people are living so much in the past and they're not imagining a better future. They're basing everything off of all these bad things that have happened to them and it's going to happen again. We're, we're living in a past that is toxic and off of toxic memories because those are the ones that your brain holds on to. Yep. It holds on to the negative thoughts, right? There's just research on that, but like come out of that. Yes. Think about a better future. Imagine a better future. This is why kids are happier. They don't know what depression is because they have no memory to go back on. Mm-hmm. Like that's why, I, like, like where you see me sitting right now, I'm in a kid's chair. Like I do this on purpose. I know it sounds <laughs> silly and stupid, but like I sit in this kid's chair because I want to imagine, and I can literally. I'm not turning my phone around, but I I see my entire office right now, and I just imagine what it's going to look like in tomorrow, like tomorrow, next week, next month. How many patients are going to be in here? what I'm going to be saying to them, like all this stuff. I, I plan out my week. I do it all right here in this kid's chair because it is that powerful. Your, your imagination is what makes you human. So utilize it. Utilize it. It's a gift from God. Mm, well, imagination station over there. Boom, baby. Yeah, this is my imagination station. I might call it that. I might put a little label on that right here. Hey, <laughs> it's all your best your practice. Um, <laughs> it's true. I do. I do love that. And it is, it is a beautiful, beautiful practice. Um, so just to, to wrap a few things up, we talked about, uh, we dove into what a new normal is. We dove into people coming in and saying that, you know, I'm, I'm in a state of pain or, you know, I have headaches or they've built a narrative that ultimately may not be, um, we'll just call it, it's limiting. It's a limiting narrative that doesn't give them uh, the permission to be the most and best expression of themselves. Um, People limit themselves. You have to get out of your own way. And that's a big part of this conversation, moving into exposure, you know, um, being able to reach out and be the exposure that's necessary to get to the patients, get to the people that need to hear the message that you have that resonate with it. Because um, the truth of the matter is, you know, chiropractic, we are artists. Uh, chiropractic is an art, philosophy, and science of things natural. Uh, the art portion is the expression of the chiropractor as they do chiropractic. Uh, the method of, of approach is the art, being able to communicate, being able to connect, being able to perform the craft 
that is the art of chiropractic. So how we expose, who we expose to, and who is accepting of that exposure is a big part of the conversation as a chiropractor, getting out and exposing yourself to people and allowing yourself to fail. Screenings was a big part of that for me is getting out and being told no a bunch of times allowed me to build character and grit to just really want to just be yep. like, why? Just tell me why you don't want this because I know it's going to change your life. Yep. <laughs> I, oh gosh, man, that puts you through it. Oh gosh. The hours we do screening and the amount of no's you get, but it does build you. It does build some tough skin. I promise you that because you will get thousand times more no's than you will. Yes. Oh yeah. But the, the excuses you hear, it, it, it does, you can make fun out of it. Like, oh my gosh. You my favorite one is, I don't have a spine. And I'm like, oh, how are you walking? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I was like, oh, that's funny. I guess I can't help you then. Oh my it's, gosh. Or like, or like, oh no, I'm getting back surgery in a couple weeks. It's like, dude, that's what we, you need to come here right now. I'll literally follow you to the parking lot until like, I get you to talk, <laughs> like, schedule an appointment. Get, Get appointment. Schedule an appointment. I'll pay for it. <laughs> Seriously, man. It is insane. It is insane what you see out there. But it's because they don't know. It's because they don't know. That's why we're out there. Right. You know, that's we're out there. Just like it's it's information. It's knowledge. It's understanding. We have an understanding that other people have they're oblivious to. You know, they're oblivious to the model mm-hmm. of practice and what it can do to help them and benefit them. Yeah. Um you know, but moving on, we we talked about reactiveness versus proactiveness, being reactive with your health versus being proactive. Yeah. It's so important. Like I can't tell you enough. I'm in my thirties. Um, I wish I would have been going to a chiropractor whenever I was younger, because I wouldn't be dealing with the health issues that I'm dealing with now in my thirties. I would have those nipped in the butt earlier, uh, versus doing the work now. But I am grateful and full of gratitude for the opportunity that I've been presented to heal and to go through the time I have. I know like uh, everyone's, <clears throat> everyone goes through their own journey and a lot of people get locked into the destination. It really is the journey. That's, that's the beautiful part of the conversation. And it's the most enjoyable oh my gosh. Yourself to enjoy it. And that's where the gratitude got to be gratitude. You got to be grateful for the effort you put in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and this whole proactive reactive thing, Brent, um, I don't know how much time we have, but like my whole, my mom's story is literally all about that. Right. She like, colon cancer, you know, runs in her family. That's what she was told. My, my grandma, her mom, and, and then my great aunt, her aunt, uh, they died of colon cancer. Oh, so right? sorry. And so, yeah, no, it was, it, it, to watch that process was rough, but we didn't know any better. Right. And so my mom was down the same path. She got uh, colonoscopies and never had a clean scan. Like, especially cause she was told to do this because they, the doctors told her like, this runs in your family. Like odds are we, like, we have to get this checked so we can catch it. Um, it's colonoscopy after colonoscopy, uh, never had a clean scan. And you know, I, I watched my grandma and my great, well, not really my grandma, she down when I was two, but my great aunt kind of filled that role as my grandma. And I watched what cancer did to her. Mm. We all know it. It's not pretty. Uh-uh. It degrades you from the inside out and always in the back of my mind, whether I showed it or not, it was always back there. Like this is going to happen to my mom. Like I was 16 years old and not my mom starting to get this stuff. And I'm trying to, I'm starting to understand like this cancer stuff. This is no joke. Uh-uh. This is no joke. But what, what are we doing about it? And it wasn't until chiropractic school where I started learning about the body. I started learning how, how it actually works. Like, in order for your body to work, your brain has to send a signal out to every cell, tissue, and organ, right? It works no other way. Like if there is an interference, your body will create a symptom. Mm-hmm. And I was starting to think like, could this do anything with, have anything to do with my mom's cancer? Um, and so I was like, mom, go, go get adjusted by someone that is going to do something about this. Like maybe that, maybe there's something, I don't know. I'm just learning about it. Check it out. Goes to the chiropractor, finds out she has a scoliosis in her back. Hmm. And the chiropractor looks at her and says, so like, these are the nerves that go to your colon. So I'm not going to do anything about your cancer. I'm just going to try and move your spine into the right position so that it can heal and function as it was meant to. Months go by of treatment and uh, she gets a 
another scan. She gets her colonoscopy and it was the first clean scan that she had. Let's go. Dude, how awesome is that? That's amazing. Now, yeah. So this, this is why I'm a chiropractor because mm. I figured out why, why is no one looking at it this way? Why are we treating it from the outside in? Why are we doing, taking all these medications, trying to put things in our body to try and fix an issue that was created inside the body, mm -hmm. right? We have to take it from the inside out. So when I get that call from my mom, yes, the relief in her voice is great, but the relief in my mind, holy cow, my mom did something about this. It wasn't just from the chiropractic, mm -hmm. right? She started eating better. She started taking care of herself. She started being proactive. This yeah. is where it all gets to. She stopped being reactive, mm -hmm. not waiting for this problem to happen. Then we're going to treat it with surgery, chemo, radiation, right? Do it with any symptom, any disease in this country. Yep. Wait till your blood pressure gets high enough. Then we're going to put you on medication. Wait for your cholesterol to get high enough. Then we'll put you on a statin. Mm -hmm. You know, stop waiting, people. Be proactive towards your health. If you start take, doing it with it now, you are going to save tens upon thousands of dollars in medical bills in the future. It's the number one reason of bankruptcy in this country is from medical bills. What if we just found a way to stop making you go to the doctor or to the hospital? because you're being proactive towards your health. You're gonna save so much money. Then now you can go on those vacations. Now you can take care of yourself. Like it's so much better if you're proactive towards your health. And that's all we're trying to do. Stop being reactive, be proactive. Mm, absolutely. That's such a beautiful story. Like um, going through the transformation with your mom and your family and watching it like, impact your family and you know that carrying into you developing your why off of how it impacted your family and how chiropractic impacted and changed and healed your family. And you mm -hmm. got that happen and just be aware of the process and watch your mom get better, dude. Like, like congratulations. First of all, like, yeah, man, thank you. It's huge. It's huge. Absolutely. It's like, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing that pains a heart than a family member that's ill, sick or burdened with some type of diagnosis. And they're, they're just, stuck on that that path and and there's no hope and there's yes. there's always hope as long as you have breath in your body always there's always hope there's a reason you're still yes. here and you have to lean into it and you know that's we talked about leaning into that pain and and finding the cause the root cause you know learning from our pain um and you know not that anyone and i would never ever hope or or want someone to acquire some type of illness so that they could go through a healing or learning experience. But, right. No, but everyone has their own journey and some people mm -hmm. do get sick, unfortunately, and, and helping them through that path. And, you know, as being a chiropractor is, I, I feel like why we're here is just facilitators of health and helping people heal and find that healing journey or experience it. Um, you know, one of my really great friends, you know, Zach Connor, he, Oh yeah. Um, Dr. Zach, he, he told me one time and it's always stuck with me. Chiropractic provides two types of adjustments, an initiation or a continuation of healing. Hmm. And that's always that's good. And it's I like you, that you have to go through that pain. You have to, you have to be willing and give yourself permission to heal and yep. the healing process sometimes is and can be painful. So, mm -hmm. I admonish those that move through that journey and do it with gratitude and do it with um, selflessness and do it for the right reasons. And then moving, moving away from that, we, we talked about something that really, I, I think that just, it brought, it brought a lot of power, imagination, being willing to have imagination, being willing to use it, being able to just imagine what a future what a tomorrow would look like not being sick not being in pain waking up being able to be able to thrive not just survive yes yes it's a gift from god man it's a literal gift that's what separates us from every other thing on this planet we have the imagination that prefrontal cortex baby oh preaching them preaching them quotes baby okay mm -hmm. so dr mike we have covered a lot tonight where can people find you? I know that if anyone's listening, any of the listeners that are up there in Muskego, Wisconsin, then this hey, is the yeah. you want to be anywhere that's close by. Dr. Mike has amazing hands. He's got a beautiful heart. He's got a beautiful practice. Mm -hmm. um, where can we find you? Where can people connect to you? 
Uh, so Facebook, Instagram, at Lakeview Family Chiropractic. Uh, I post weekly. I try to give contact that's appliable, that you can substitute things in your life so that you can get an alternate route towards health. Um, it's just super ap- applicable. That's what mm. I try to do on it. I love it. I love it. And I just, I just want to reiterate right before we hop off, stop waiting to make the decision. Stop waiting to give yep. your permission. Take the step today. Be the example for yourself, for your family, for your friends. Be the one that takes the step that says, today is the last day that I allow a sickness or disease to control me. I am the master of my vessel. I choose health. And to go find a local chiropractor and get your spine checked because you don't you don't deserve to be in pain. Like you shouldn't be in pain. You shouldn't be in a quote unquote new norm of pain. Yeah. Awesome. Mike, dude, this has been this has been amazing. That was a blast, Brent. Like <laughs> I love it. Like I love talking to people about chiropractic, but especially with people that are like minded about chiropractic. It's just another it, it's an awesome. It's awesome. So super blessed to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's been such a blessing to have you and such an honor. Uh, again, anybody, Lakeview Family Chiropractic up in Muskego, Wisconsin, find him on Facebook, find him on Instagram, reach out to Dr. Mike. He is brilliant. He's going to change so many lives up there. And just thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for just sharing your nuggets. Um, I'm excited for you, brother. And I'm excited for the future. I'm excited for the future of your practice and the people that it's going to impact. Oh, much blessings, man. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Mike, it's been a blessing. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Brent. Absolutely. And that's it, guys. We will see you next week with Dr. Jamal Frewster. We have uh, Michael Tokosh coming on tomorrow. So make sure you guys hit that like, share, subscribe button. See you next time. Light and love. This is Dr. Brent, legendary chiropractor. We're out.